So, friends, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Just think of all of the groups, all of the people in the privacy of their homes, all over the world, every land, coming to a point of stillness, remembering the beauty of the service network, of the human beings who together are working with courage, with purpose, with a measure of love to take evolution forward to its next step. We're going to begin this session, Dora Alvarez from the Spanish section of the Arcane School will lead us together with the, this five o'clock mantra of the new group of world servers. For those who know Spanish, please join Dora. First of all, she will lead us in Spanish, and those of you who know Spanish, join with her so she doesn't feel she's on her own. And then she will lead us in English, and we could, or because we all have a copy of this, we can sound it together. Thank you, Dora. Thank you, Steve. Que el poder de la vida una afluya a través de todos los grupos de verdaderos servidores. Que el amor del alma una caracterice la vida de todos los que tratan de ayudar a los grandes seres. Que cumpla con mi parte en el trabajo uno a través del olvido de mí mismo, la inofensividad y la correcta palabra. Made the power of the one life pour through the group of all true servers. Made the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones. May I fulfill my part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and dry speech. Oh. So friends, it's wonderful to have Dora bringing in the language of the Spanish community and particularly for us meeting here in New York, to have in mind that this group that we represent is a group from the Americas, from Alaska, through Canada, through the United States of America, through all of the lands of Central America and Southern America. And so whenever we meet, we are of course the one human family, the one humanity, but we're particularly that circle of human beings 
who are the peoples of the Americas. Now, this is to me this whole afternoon. It's only about three, one to five. That's four hours of my maths is working right. It's not a lot of time. But already, it seems to me, the work we did earlier, Michael's talk, Chris's introduction, that wonderful discussion period and the visualization, that's like a whole day's work. And we're working with energies of such beauty, not so much because this is what we are doing, but because something is happening through this week <coughs> to the human being. Something is happening to us those whose lives are motivated by service and by a commitment to evolution. So we can imagine that the beauty of the work we are doing here is captured in tens of thousands, maybe that's an exaggeration, so let me say in thousands of gatherings around the planet at this time. We're going to continue in a way by taking the beginnings of this movement that Michael spoke of with the Theosophical Movement and that worker of courage and vision, HPB, through to our time, to the story of a surfer, a worker, part of our family, a worker who's in s been working with the Agni Yoga and the Alice Bailey teachings for much of her adult life, like so many of us, but a worker who's found a field of service right on the front line of peace building work. So let me tell you a little bit about Dot. She's an educator and a peace builder whose keynote is inspiring cooperation on behalf of the common good. She serves on the Nicholas Rurick Museum Board of Directors. She's a founder and president of the National Peace Academy in the USA, a founder and a board member of the Global Alliance for Ministries and Infrastructures of Peace. That's getting into new jargon. It's not just the Ministries of Peace, it's the Ministries and Infrastructures of Peace. <laughs> a founder and executive director of the River Phoenix Center for Peace Building. And there's something so beautiful in that that I hope we hear a little of that. She coordinates Push for Peace and is on the welcoming committee with Shift Network's Birth 2012. Her work in education, politics and grassroots community organizing is focused on applied peace building, utilizing a shared responsibility and shared leadership model with right relationship at the heart of all this work. From 2005 to 2007, she served as dire Executive Director of the Peace Alliance and Campaign for U.S. Department of Peace. And prior to that, she was the National Campaign Manager for Dennis Kucinich for President in 2004. And here's what you may not know. In the world of fast-pitch softball, <laughs> Dr. Dot is known for her revolutionary fast-pitch hitting technique, the MAVA method. The <coughs> Secrets of Hitting Success. That's right. She is co-author of the book Conscious Education, The Bridge to Freedom, The Bridge to Freedom, and is a keynote speaker and workshop facilitator at conferences worldwide. And I think we've come up with something which is pretty terrific. She's going to speak on the theme peace building as a living synthesis of inner and outer service. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I always want to do this. Uh, because no matter what, it's, it is never about me. And you know the movement, the youth movement on the planet right now? It's called We Day. WeDay.com. You'll want to check that out. It's going from me to we. Is this not the new peace symbol? 
when I wrote the title that Steve and I had talked about, I wrote it as peace building as a loving synthesis of inner and outer service. Is that going to be OK? They'll fix it. Bobby, you'll fix it. OK, good. <laughs> so and everyone can hear OK? Great. And I know it's peace building as a living synthesis of inner and outer service. But the truth is, it is all about the loving will at this moment in time for all of us in, out here and in the new group of world servers, inner and outer. So it's very joyful to stand here today and thank you for making it possible. And thank you for the work, the team, the trust team that has coordinated and organized. And not just for this event, but the livingness, the essence of this work as it has a tremendous ripple effect from New York and from all of the centers. And a welcome and a heartfelt connection to all of those who are watching this wherever they are. And as we all know, a group gathering of any size is always a unique and pe peculiarly intense opportunity for service. And Dora, you shared that beautiful insight with me over break, and you give me the courage to dare to say that this opportunity for service at this particular moment on our journey as the new group of world servers and as humanity, it is an opportunity at a critical moment that is the moment that all of humanity, including those who have gone on before us and are now working with and through us, have been looking towards and preparing for throughout this great experiment called humanity. Now, that knowledge does no more or less than intensify our joyful shared responsibility at this moment. But think about that. At this great turning of cycles, at this great turning, shifting, everybody's talking about it, everybody's playing with it in one way or another around this planet we all call home. Today, the 22nd, and this weekend, this is the moment. So I invite us right now, together and as a group, to consciously align and offer our group in service, as we do consistently. Let us do it so intentionally right now, through the first of the three invocations given to humanity, this one in 1935. An invocation that I have used with groups in education and politics and sports, and it never fails to deepen and align shared group purpose. Will you say it with me? Let the forces of light bring illumination to humankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May men and women of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all people be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. These divine aspects of human nature are the very key to creating a culture of peace on Earth. The forces of light, the light of the soul, lighting the dark places, the spirit of peace, the will of God, the will to good, and in my line of work, downright resolution of conflict, goodwill, a spirit of cooperation, intelligent love in action. At the heart of everything we do in all of the lines of work I am involved in, and for all of us, is it not true? The science of right human relationship. It is always and ever about relationship. So together, light, love, and power, the Buddha, the spirit of peace, the avatar of synthesis, 
create a flow of spirit through form, the very definition of health and the foundation for an infrastructure of peace. You know, I've always loved the definition of goodwill. And I, I probably first heard Mary Bailey say it from a podium wherever, at the other side of New York, right? Years and years and years ago. Love in action, right? Goodwill is love in action. So I used to drive a red Jeep all over the place. And on the tire cover, it said, goodwill is love in action. And constantly, particularly on major road trips, beep, beep, hoot, hoot. Yes, goodwill. I got more beeps on that than any bumper sticker I've ever had on my car. So as we talk about peace building now, peace is not the goal. And I know we know this, but it's a healthy reminder. Peace is not the goal. It's the natural outcome of certain conditions. So goodwill, or love in action, leads to living in right relationship with self, others, and the world around us, thereby creating the conditions for a culture of peace. And before we can talk about peace or peace building, we need to define peace. And the definition we are using in all of the work we are doing is taken directly from the Earth Charter, which I know many of you are familiar with. Peace is the wholeness created by right relationship with oneself, other persons, other cultures, other life, earth, and the larger whole of which all are a part. I want to say right up front this afternoon that besides my heart being so full I can hardly stand it, with the, the, the privilege and the joy of sharing within this group today, perhaps the most pragmatic thing that we can do as servers, as the new group of world servers, is to stand at the center point of the even-armed cross of service, that even-armed Aquarian cross, vertically aligned to receive. We're receptors of impressions and impulse of the substance of the plan. And does that not, I mean, does that not get you? The substance, I mean, think about that for a minute, the substance of the plan. While simultaneously, I do that for you, Steve, while simultaneously serving as organizing and impressing agents horizontally. So we are ever and always both recipients and agents, a responsive factor and an originating and impressing factor right out here, bridging inner and outer. We become demonstration models. Our work becomes demonstration models. So I submit that that is the very tipping point opportunity at this significant seven-year NGWS festival that includes the full moon of Capricorn that Christine Chris spoke so beautifully to earlier. As a group, we embody this cross of service and become potent transmitters of the divine plan intentionally, aware of our living inner and outer interconnectedness as never before. And Michael spoke to that so beautifully. And it does begin with each one of us. It begins with a personal awareness and a personal practice. But it certainly does not stop there. And just look at us gathered here and through live stream and around the world. There is a bridge of souls and servers. And there is this living synthesis. We are gathered on this day, 12-22, 12. It's called Birth 2012 by millions and millions and millions of us around the world. And as we meet, there are thousands of groups, as Steve alluded to, and millions of people around the world celebrating the new humanity. We know we need a new future. In order to have a new future, our youth have made it very clear right now out here, we need a new story. We share the responsibility as storytellers, my friends. And right now, I'll just name a few of, of what I know, and hopefully in the dialogue sharing time, we can name others, because to connect those dots, no pun intended, is so, it's so significant. We become the new story, the emerging story. So there are med mobs all over the planet today, well, this weekend, 
meditation mobs, like flash mobs, is that good? Med mobs, planned and unplanned, all over the planet, and particularly at sacred spots, welcoming the new humanity. Birth 2012 itself started rolling out yesterday when today was yesterday, down under, and rolled out with the sun and all around the globe. And we had a, uh, one of the Birth 2012 hub events at Lifebridge Sanctuary last evening for the winter solstice. So these events are, once again, celebrating, and as Michael spoke to, a transformation of consciousness, or an expansion of consciousness for humanity on the planet right now as we recognize ourselves. A big project, which actually happened from New York and is all over the place, all over the world now, with musicians and artists, poets creating and celebrating life and a better world, and so much more. Could it be that we have matured to the point of coming together to see where we are and where we are going and how best to support that? And I know we ask ourselves those deep questions all the time, but could it be that we are right now a microcosm of the macrocosm as we know our elder brothers conclave every hundred years on our behalf? It makes me think in terms of reality and actuality. So the reality, which is like the real thing, right? So could it be that humanity's conclave moment is the result of Sanat Kumara sending out a call to himself? Just as you or I would send out a call to ourselves. I mean, we know that this planet is Sanat Kumara, right? That's the expression of. So we, all, we know all that. So Dot, come on, get your physical, emotional, mental act together to create the conditions for the next revelation. What is that revelation? We know the answer to that as well. And we are talking about it and telling that new story of our oneness and our interconnectedness and all that that means to create a coherent field for precipitation, for actualization through form. It's exciting to contemplate. And hopefully, over these years, I've tempered it a bit, it's perhaps enlightened enthusiasm. But all of the groups this weekend are collaborating around a shared intention, recognizing the end of the world as we know it, and welcoming the new humanity through these celebratory and meditative and cultural events. So what role do we play? The new group of world servers, I think of the Nirmanakayas and the intermediary role that they play from Shambhala to hierarchy. And as we all know, the new group plays such an intermediary role within the substance of the divine plan from hierarchy through to humanity. And we know that this word through holds the key to this next phase of the human journey. So as we discuss the living synthesis of inner and outer service, a bridge of souls and servers, I find myself immersed right out here, striving to help build the infrastructure for a culture of peace with so many of my colleagues sitting right here in this room. And in, in this case, through institutions and forms that embody and reflect the laws and principles. It has always been for me about a practical application of the ageless wisdom teaching, including the Maver method. And that, of course, entails a serious consideration of the Antakarana, or the bridge of consciousness, which is a whole other sharing. I'd like to share a few examples, and then I look forward to a dialogue, because I find in, on my own journey, that the more we are able to have dialogues, deep listening dialogues, which is part of the Peace Builders Toolkit, along with impulse control and anger management and use your words, uh, use I statements, etc. It's all social emotional learning skills, all of that. But this dialogue that we can have on a level that talks about why we are here and where we are and where we are going can make a huge difference in the world right now. So actuality. We all think and probably work from universals to particulars. And I do love the bumper sticker, think global, act local, and find myself blessed, as Steve shared, to be working at all levels of service right now, global, national, and local. And actuality has to do with our day-to-day -day service from our own practice of right relationship with self, others, and the world around us. I want to interject there, we all know, right, that it, the change really does begin with me. 
if we each said that to ourselves. I know we all get that. Sometimes I still think we could play that more intensely. It actually begins with me. I become the demonstration model of what it is I'm calling for out in the world, and then any group I'm working with has that same and equal challenge, and it is all about group work right now. So from our own practice of peace and right relationship to the law of group progress to the law of creative manifestation, how we, in fact, actuate and eventuate that inner reality into and through outer form we end up demonstrating that living synthesis of inner and outer service. So the Global Alliance is a loosely organized community, and I will call it an organism. And that is what we have named it from the beginning in 2005 when it was founded in London. It's a group of dedicated individuals, organizations, and autonomous campaigns. Some of you have been involved in the States for many years, and you're in this room supporting their national governments or state governments to significantly invest in the development of skills and infrastructure dedicated to the peaceful resolution of conflict. So what, what we talk about in our deep dialogue circles is what harmony through conflict actually means and what it looks like when you put it into practice out here through humanity. The call is for ministries and infrastructures for peace, National peace academies, other institutions that embody and reflect the emerging worldview of cooperation, synthesis, group work, right relations, social justice. And there are four ministries of peace on the planet, and most of us are not aware of that to help share the new story. Nepal, just in the, this is just in the last four or five years. Nepal has a minister of peace. The Solomon Islands, Costa Rica. And last July, we made history. Humanity made history for the first time in recorded history as Sudan split. South Sudan stepped forward with a minister of peace at that highest level. We need to know these things, right? Because this is part of the emerging story. This is part of that inner and outer bridge. So the National Peace Academy is another group project. And I say group project because in each of the areas of service I find myself in, I can't talk about it as me. It is truly all about we. It is all a group effort. Many of us coming together so intentionally bringing the essence of the perennial wisdom to the forefront through these projects. So the National Peace Academy, and there's a great story that underlies the founding of the Peace Academy that sometime, somewhere, we'll end up telling, that ties uh, Dr. Kettner, who worked with Spinoza and, or studied Spinoza and uh, founded the Biosophical Institute, and Alice Bailey and Nicholas Rorick all came together in a beautiful weave way back in the early part of the last century, in the late 20s and throughout the 30s. And at that time, there wasn't the thought necessarily of a National Peace Academy in this country, but there cer certainly was a beautiful cooperation among those individuals and those groups at that time. And I know that's news in, to, in, in some ways. And so as the Peace Academy emerged and through, through meditation and quiet time and, and you know you get some of these indications and realizations, we realized that this cooperation is, is was and is truly a bridging of this inner and outer and truly this bridging of souls and servers. And so we are helping with the full development of the peace builder, inner and outer, personal and professional, and we are facilitating the development of peace systems, I mean, taking a whole systems approach from local to global. And so often when I speak, I get a lot of pushback from people who say, but we just had this terrible tragedy happen. But oh, this violence is going to keep happening. We, are, we live in a violent culture. And I find myself over and over again standing my ground. And you know that's a law in Florida, and I live in Florida right now. And the stand your ground law, when I am interviewed about that, I say, you know, I don't have a problem with stand your ground. I have a problem when the only tool in our toolbox is a gun. What we need in our toolbox are other tools, like the peace building, skill building tools 
anger management and impulse control, et cetera. We need to be teaching our children and ourselves. So education is really a key. And I know we all know this. Because education helps shape society. Education both formal and informal. And so we founded this inst learning institution in spite of facing a recession, in spite of many naysayers. We had enough support in this country and we used appreciative inquiry. Some of you may be familiar with that approach. And you know, I love the pragmatic approach of the trans-Himalayan wisdom, how an idea manifests, a vision that gets clothed in men mental and astral and physical substance. How does that happen? And it's very straightforward, as we know, with clarity of vision, the capacity to hold a point of tension, to articulate that vision, and the steadfast and conscious focus through desire in the best sense of that word. So David Cooperrider, a professor at Case Western Reserve University, facilitated that process with both a visioning summit and then a design summit. And for me, as I share this, in the spirit of right relationship within the group, the new group of world servers, I do so knowing in my heart that the more we are able to talk in these kinds of terms about how we utilize these laws and principles in practical ways, the more we will find ways to apply them ourselves without ever losing that inner and that vertical point. So you discover, you dream, you design, and then you take action. And so it is with all of this emergent peace building work from a positive peace perspective. And this is the other thing, you know, the Alice Bailey writings have so informed my thinking over the years. And when, when we say positive peace perspective, one of, the, one of the key elements of this is we are not anti-anything. We are always looking at what it will take to get where we want to go, right? How we create the conditions for a culture of peace, for example. We will not do that by fighting against the existing system. And Buckminster Fuller made that imminently clear. We will do that by creating a system that wor works so much better and is so inspiring. That is the very technique of hierarchy, is inspiration. And so one of the signature events for the National Peace Academy is the Peace Building Peace Learning Intensive. It's a week-long intensive that typically happens during the summer in, the, in this hemisphere. And for one week, 60 to 70 people come together, and they learn through five spheres, personal, social, political, institutional, and ecological. And they come away with not only a deepened personal awareness and practice of peace, but a plan for community organizing to implement when they return home. In 2010, one of the participants was a gentleman by the name of Jeffrey, with whom I am now working closely in Gainesville, Florida, where the Phoenix family is founding the River Phoenix Center for Peace Building. And I will tell you that I've only been at it about one year, and I only relocated about six months ago. But my friends, we are developing a process model that literally demonstrates how we will break the cycle of violence in a community in the United States. We are working with all sectors. Uh, juveniles are court ordered to take certain classes with us. And we're di uh, facilitating dialogue with the public schools and working with other nonprofits, and all of it based on what we hold essential in terms of the laws and principles. And at the heart of it, once again, the science of right human relationship. It, it is all about relationship. So we bring best practices, and then we use a train-the-trainer model so that it is an inside-out job. Because again, and Michael spoke to it, Christine and Steve have spoken to it, it is always from the inside out where real transformation will occur. So this process model then, if you stand in Florida in this country, let's roll it out north and west ultimately and make it translatable. So we also use the banner of peace, the circle of one humanity and the three circles within. When we learn to celebrate one another's arts, science, and religions, we will indeed live in Pax Cultura a symbol that, for me, actually holds the energetics, the sacred geometry of the fire of love. And as Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, 
If civilization is to survive, we must cultivate the science of human relationship, the ability of all peoples of all kinds to live together and work together in the same world at peace. So the call, the call for the new group of world servers is a call to action. It is a call to action at a moment in time when we stand on a threshold together that we have all been working for, not just in this lifetime, but certainly in this lifetime for decades, many of us. As together we stand at that center point of the even-armed cross, and in terms of the Maver method, we need to keep our eye on the ball. So there are six things, and I'm just going to name them before I do a closing, closing minute with you, and then we will dialogue. Six essential points that for any of the group work we are doing, we all hold dear and we use talking circles because as we shift from a punishment to a, a restorative practice model around the globe, thanks to Dominic Barter and many others, talking circles are one of the keys. Joy is a special wisdom. Two, energy follows thought. Three, walk the talk. Everyone needs models more than they need critics. Four, the spirit of cooperation, using a shared responsibility, shared leadership model. Five, keep on keeping on. To demonstrate is better than to form structured concepts of. Six, if you do not know what to do, be kind and loving. You cannot go wrong. <laughs> you can feel it. Can you not feel it? this anchoring, anchoring and expressing moment. So in, in closing, you know, about almost 20 years ago, now I always say 15 years, but I've been saying it for about five <laughs> years. So almost 20 years ago, it occurred to me in a blinding glimpse of the obvious that no matter what I'm doing in this rather third-ray eclectic life of mine, from sports to politics to education to the healing arts to writing to singing and playing guitar to whatever it is, whatever hat I'm wearing, I'm really only ever doing one thing. I inspire cooperation on behalf of the common good. At first I didn't dare speak it. It seemed, ooh. But the truth is, the more we speak through our hearts as part of the great group soul, identifying and articulating and acknowledging and owning what it is that is ours to offer in this world which leads to action, the better it is for all of us. So I invite you, reminding all of us that this is the moment, <laughs> to go into a moment of silence and go deep within. Go to that place you know so well in your own meditation and stillness work. And take just one minute what will you offer? What do you offer? What is your unique strength? Touch that. What is your version of inspire cooperation on behalf of the common good? as you gently come back into the room, holding whatever that seed is, because there will be an opportunity for you know, one or more of you to share that, if you would like, in, in a moment. One of the things that has really touched me over this past year or so, and Steve mentioned it, it's this push for peace and birth 2012. A group of us came together in a room similar to this, only we were, we were together for three days 
many of, from all over the world, about 28 of us, and we said, what if we all dropped our personal and professional agendas and just came together representing all the groups we represent and the words that I put into the circle, and what if we were simply groups working with groups? And that is part of what has inspired Push for Peace in particular, which is simply groups all over the world saying yes to take actions for a culture of peace. This is the moment. The time is now. And the new group of world servers plays a unique and very significant role at that point of consciousness. Namaste.